Hi, Carrie. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Christine. You're on mute. We're going to have a full house tonight. Uh, let me know when you're ready so I could go on YouTube. All right. I think uh, let's. Um, Angelo, I'm not sure if he's going to be exactly on time because he said he would just be getting home from work. Um, so we're just waiting for uh, Len. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, hi, Len. Elizabeth. Hey. Simon, Sharon's here. I think we're just waiting for Elizabeth and Simon. <clears throat> do we want to uh, do we want to start and let them join? You, catch up? you have a, you have a quorum, so you might as well. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Jason, let me know when you're ready. We're ready. Okay, we're almost there. Give me one second. You are good to go. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to open the meeting? So moved. A second. Anyone? Raise your hand. Second. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, before we start with anything, can I get a volunteer um, to take minutes for this particular meeting since we're doing it on a rotating schedule? Anyone? I'll do it. Great, Elizabeth, okay. Okay, um, so I hope everybody's okay. It's so nice to see everybody. Um, I think the first thing if we can just get out of the way and done is, did everybody have a chance to review the last two minutes that were sent out last time, just so that we can get those approved? Does anybody have any corrections to them or anything? Never received them. I didn't get them. I didn't either. No one got them? They were sent, they were sent out at, with the last I, meeting. I got the September 10th. Yeah. Yeah, they were, that was the, um, the plan, the plan to look at, right? Right, and then right. I know Simon did the minutes for the September meeting, and I had done the minutes for the meeting back from February. So they should be somewhere in your email. Um, if no one's really ready to do that, I guess I'll have to push that to the next one. Hi, Simon. So do we want to do that, and we'll resend the minutes out to everybody? No, sure. Agree. I'll have a look okay. at that and then. All right. So, you know, we'll send that, you know what, Elizabeth, after you um, have the minutes ready for this meeting, mm -hmm. we will can send them all out together so everybody can okay. just look at all those minutes. All right. Sound good? Okay. Um, so the other thing we were looking to get, but I don't know if anybody's here to give us an update from any I, coyote I activity. That, oh, great, Dan. Okay. Um, uh, Chris has reported that he's only, uh, in the, well, the village manager's office has only gotten one call in the last uh, month and a half. Uh, and Chris got, was referred to Chris, uh, was from uh, a woman in, on uh, Soundview up in the Heights regarding Warren Park. 
The, uh, they investigated it, uh, did not find anything, set up a camera to on the trails to try and see what was going on. Uh, a lot of activity, uh, one small coyote on one picture, which was very early on and hasn't appeared. Uh, lots of raccoons, opossums, uh, and a walking skunk. <laughs> uh, they Where they were, set up the camera? On the trail. There's there are trails back there. Uh, I don't know which trail he picked, but uh, whatever. Uh, there was a <clears throat> call uh, uh, recently regarding a dead coyote near Westchester Joint Waterworks on Ramernick Avenue. They didn't find anything. Uh, <clears throat> And so basically things have been relatively quiet. I saw one the other day just working across the street, but that was, I mean, literally it was there and gone in like a second. Where was this, Sharon? <laughs> it was on um, Melbourne. Oh, really? Yeah, it, it just ran from the right side of the street to the left side of the street. And then there was like cars and a fence and it came back around the fence to someone else's yard. But it was so fast. Uh, he clearly didn't want to have anything to do with anybody. Yeah, my my neighbors also saw one in Florence Park about two weeks ago. I did too, and Lorena. Yeah, and I know on next door there were a couple pictures posted in the last three weeks as well. Not a lot, but maybe two or three pictures from different people. It could be the same kind of. Thing. So, um, in just looking through um, social media posts um, on Facebook through the Rynek page, um, October sixth was when someone spotted a coyote in Florence Park. November 2nd, someone said there was a coyote in a neighbor's yard on Hunter Street. And next door, it seemed like more people commented on coyote sightings in Harrison, but kind of right on that, you know, border of us. Um, I think there was only one person who actually lived in Mamaronek that said any, but all these have been just really like sightings, no like negative encounters, just we saw a coyote, we saw a coyote. So that's good that there's been nothing negative that's been reported or posted or anything like that. And the fact that I think that we are seeing them um, is good at good for, you know, obviously the ecosystem and, and the balance of, of our surroundings, but, and it's really good that we're not seeing any reports of any attacks or anything like that. Um, and it's just a side note, I have somebody in my neighborhood who I bumped into that I know, and I was talking to him. I didn't realize um, he was actually a trapper. And he's the trapper that trained Chris, the trapper for the village. So we had a nice conversation um, about coyotes and I asked him what his take was on the situation. And um, immediately the first thing that came out of his mouth was let him be. He said, you have to let them be, They, uh, unless there's a problem with coyote, obviously. But even when there is a problem and you try to trap the coyote, which then has to be euthanized, you never know if that coyote was the coyote that caused the problem. Unless, you know, you can, you know, you're out there and the coyote's out there and you're going after it and you know that you caught the coyote that caused the problem. So to just set the trap, you don't really know what you're catching. But it was, um, it was a nice interesting conversation to get his perspective on it as well just being that he's in the business and that's what he's that's what he does well, that's good to hear i think um i think if we do have sharon and i live right around the corner from each other i think if we do have coyotes because I, I said there were there were a pair of young ones that completely disappeared but since then you know i walk three of i have three dogs we haven't really heard anything i it was funny a couple of nights ago, I was walking the dogs and I heard a little bit of like yipping and I thought, hmm. So it's interesting that Sharon spotted a coyote because if they're here, what's great is that they're really shy and quiet. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and actually there's one house where they've come out of multiple times where my two dogs, when I walked in the other night, were like ridiculously interested in this one house. And I had to keep pulling them away, you know, saying we're going to walk and they're never interested. They don't care. So there could have been one back there that just wasn't coming because they were like zoned in on it. Um, but honestly, it's the only sighting I've seen in like three, four months <laughs> at least. So my dogs have been more interested too. I do have a question. So I received an email from a, uh, one of our 
from town that she spotted a coyote and there are people are seeing more koi wolves because it was larger and it was more in a, a certain area. Um, and my question would be, so we have this task force and if there is an area which often happens where there is definitely more of a population do we have any of us because i'd be willing to do this and i know that during the time of you know COVID, obviously it's a little bit tricky um if we were to go into that area where people are spotting these the higher population and hand out the materials that are being worked on or even again i don't know about this right now but going door to door and introducing ourselves and saying you know do you have any questions do you have any concerns and answering those questions for them because people are you know there's a sighting here and there but Quite often, you know, Florence Park, for example, do we concentrate more handing out, you know, that material so they don't have to pick it up at a store or whatever, we can hand it right to them to answer questions because on next door, there was a whole discussion again about a coyote sighting and people are going back, I'm reading and I was going to comment because I, I feel like that's something else that we should work on is getting kind of like a little uh, response team together that just short answers you know, kind of clears up any misinformation, gives the facts and moves on. People, again, going back and forth and then, no, no, you know, there was a child attacked. And, you know, so those are two things that I want to bring up, maybe going into the populated areas with material and secondly, addressing what is being posted because what we're trying to do with, you know, it, supplying information about re-educate, you know, re-educating both the people and the coyotes. It's it's the opposite of what's happening on, on a lot of the social media. Well, or we can also put our own posts up. I think if somebody wanted to do that proactively, you know, every once in a while post, you know, it's this season or just a reminder, if you see a coyote, it's okay. It's not a big deal and put some things out before we get the sightings. So it's, it's getting kind of ahead of the game. And, and the same on the Village of America Facebook page. I think there's a Facebook page, right? I know there's recreation, but I, mean, I think there's another one. Um, maybe. There is. And the other thing is, I know I'm on a different committee that's about to start. And there are, and I think this happens with a lot of the committees where we have the committee meeting, and then there's like an open forum. Huh? You know, maybe like once per quarter, if we get in the sink of this, do we want to do something like that? Like open up for just a half hour, see if anyone shows up? They have you mean like to see if they have any questions or things like that they want to know what we're doing if they say i've seen a coyote i see all this stuff on social media but i'm not sure what do you guys you know if we're going to share information around like maybe that's something else we could share i don't know how many people even know that we talk about it i actually think that's a good idea almost every committee i've ever been on had something called just open time right uh, i think it makes it more transparent um and it makes our committee uh, i think even more responsible i think that's an excellent suggestion well, we could definitely, um, I mean, if, can we do that, Dan? Like, could we, oh, yeah. we, could we have a public moment, like a, you know, address the committee, if you have any questions, would we be able to do that? Sure, but just so you know, the, the entire meeting is open to the public. And <clears throat> on, you know, if there's an, anybody who can attend at any point in time, and they can ask questions, but there's no reason you can't set a specific, you know, portion of the meeting you know, for it as well, just so we just, it's not done in a way that stifles other comments. Right. So, so maybe just, um, we could just, um, I know I don't really go on next door, but um, I am on Facebook. Um, I'd be happy to just put a post um, up about when our next meeting is close to when the meeting is. Cause I find when you do it too far in advance, people forget. Um, and if somebody wanted to do that on next door, just to say, hey, we have a committee, at least, you know, do it within like 24 hours, the day before, or it's probably a good day. Um, just to say, hey, you know, if anyone has any questions about coyotes, the coyote ad hoc committee is meeting tonight. Um, if anybody wants to join, um, they're welcome to. We yeah, could do I, have, I have no problem doing that because I moderate on next door anyway. So I, okay. I have enough. Yeah, I definitely think we can do that. Um, Oh, and also as far as seeing the coyotes around, um, my neighbor that is the trapper, he said that they're regularly, um, they regularly go through his backyard at his neighbor's yard. They come from the train tracks um, and that's the 
Jefferson area. So it's like Jefferson, Wood, um, Lorraine, Harold, that, that area right there. Um, so they're definitely, they're definitely out. They're definitely around, um, but it's good that we're not really getting any um, negative reports. Can I ask geographically where Harbor Heights is? Harbor Heights uh, is, the, you know where the waterworks water is? Yep. It's up there. Once you go past the throughway and you go, I mean, uh, the throughway bridge and go up towards the waterworks, that's all the uh, the heights on both sides of the uh, Mermernic Avenue. All right, thanks. Um, so the other thing that we were going to kind of discuss um, was the the uh, coyote plan that we're trying to put together. I don't know if anyone looked at that one that um, Jerry kind of modeled after the Newcastle one. Um, I've looked at it. It's it's very lengthy. Um, so I started making some edits, um, just some notes on it, because um, I think it's rather long um, and I would love to streamline it. I also had looked at this one, which is the, the Nourishal Humane Society's template, which I think is a little bit more streamlined. So I was trying to kind of combine them a little bit. Newcastle's has a lot of stuff in there. I think that we don't need a lot of things that isn't applicable to us. Um, so I don't, I know Simon, had you started looking at that? Um, I, I did, and then I immediately got swamped with work. Um, I'm, I'm kind of crazy, unfortunately, with stuff um, working right now, actually. But I do plan to do the one sheet. I had started, I have a draft somewhere that didn't get okay. more than a paragraph or so, but I was pulling bullets from some of the Newcastle, some of the Humane Society stuff, which seemed most relevant. I okay. do plan to do it, but unfortunately, haven't done it. No, I get it. I was the same way. I, I got through, you know, the first few pages. Um, and then again, I, I too got pulled away. But um, so I don't know if just like a couple of us want to really kind of hammer away at that as um, Simon, if you're working on like the one page thing, great. And I can continue to look at like the big plan. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to kind of take a look at it and just make some minor notes. And then we can kind of make whatever adjustments we feel is necessary or important um, because it, it is long. I think it's just way too long. Um, I think this thing is like over 20 pages and I just don't think we need, I don't think we need one that's quite that large. Um, Cause to be perfectly honest, I don't know how many people will even read it. So I think it's, I think that one page information is gonna be more important than the bigger um, whole plan. Um, but I just think this one's very lengthy and definitely needs to be hammered away at and kind of chopped up a little bit. Yeah, it's um, way too long. No one's reading that. <laughs> no, no, no one is going to read it. I mean, it's just page and let, let it be very clear and, you know, very, very specific. Okay. So can someone reshare the, the Newcastle with me? Because I, I remember looking at it at one point and having the same impression. Uh, I'll get to the rest of this later. <laughs> um, but I have, I, I cannot locate it right now. Sure. Yeah, I can. Can do that. I can send out that one and the Humane Society one when um, when we send out the minutes as well. I'll send out just one big um, one one email with all the attachments so everybody has everything. That, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is going. This is going to. This is would be shared publicly. What we what would be shared the finished product, right? The finished product finished would products would be on the village website, so that it's. The, the master plan would be on the website if anybody was interested. And then the one page sheet that we're trying to develop, that I think is what would be mailed out, emailed out, what you would wanna do if you wanted to go into neighborhoods where coyote activity is greater, that would be what you would be giving to people with the bigger picture on the website. So that would be more of a like basically very simple do's and don'ts. Right. And then, um, yeah, and then the bigger one will be on the website and that has just a lot more information in it for people to just, you know, educate themselves. I'll definitely take a look at both. I'll take a crack at getting, you know, the one pager as well. Yeah, the Newcastle one is long. I'm just gonna warn you now. <laughs> it's very long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I think that's kind of, I think that's where we are right now. I think we have to kind of just 
um, make time to kind of finish this up and get the one page thing going, um, keep tabs on the sightings. Um, it's so funny, every, every time we have a meeting, I feel like the meeting ends and like I go on social media and someone goes, I just saw a coyote. It's like, it's weird. Like, um, but does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any ideas, any input? Has there been, um, um, Eric and Mike, I know that you guys were gonna talk about, um, you know, once the kids start, you know, kind of going, um, biking to school, walking to school, things like that. I think the last meeting you had said about ed some kind of education or reminders. I, I know COVID's been crazy and you guys have your hands full. Has anything been shared with kids at all? Yeah, so the uh, we, we had that, <clears throat> I forgot the title of it, but it was a, an, an eight or so minute video, basically on how to protect your pets, how to uh, coyote proof your yard and, and things like that. That was a cartoon, but um, you know, had content that was you know good for, I'd say, middle school age or maybe older bellows and up, plus adults. <clears throat> we've uh, we've shared that again this uh, at this week actually. Okay. Oh, um, and uh, the other principals, I think uh, Tara Goldberg and Daniel Warren did not show it to the Daniel Warren kids. I and mean, it's got uh, you know it recommends putting spiked collars on your dog and it, you know, equates pets with, with like meat. So um, we're not doing that with Daniel Warren, but for, uh, like I said, the, the Bellows kids and, and, and older, it's got some plain and simple good advice. So we've done that. And uh, we were talking about this the other day, we have these you know video monitors in our hallways and we never took down the content from when we left back in March. So the, you know, the, the letter day was going all spring and all summer in our empty hallways, but also up there were the, uh, you know, our Wiley Coyote um, tips for defending yourself against coyote posters. Um, so we've wheeled those out again. And then uh, I, I hadn't talked about this with, with Mike or anybody else yet, but we were thinking of things like a, uh, a, a Coyote poster contest. You know, but might be a great idea for the kids, certainly on their at-home days, where we can, you know, give them a theme, maybe different grade levels, um, get some finalists, and then have some some impartial judging and, and winners, and then post them on our website. Get the kids more involved. Great. I got a suggestion to make. Um, I know we all spoke about, you know, we all have neighbors that have seen coyotes in the area. I had a neighbor come to me and said that it's so one in Florence Park a few weeks ago. Um, how are we sharing? Because coyotes are, are they, they kind of move around and they kind of, because they have like a large territory that they stay in and they tend to stay in one area for a short period of time or, or, or you know, some period of time. And they, they, they move around and how are we letting the community know that coyotes are now in their area? Is there any way for us to update it on some type of a website? And the reason why I'm saying is because like my neighbor just got a puppy and their son has been, or daughter has been walking the dog at nighttime and he's probably 10, 11 years old and he's outside with the puppy by himself. So I think, and, and I have, I've went to the house and I've told them, hey, listen, just an FYI, I just want you to know there have been coyotes in the area. So maybe, you know, a small child walking the dog late at night or, or when it's dark outside might not be the best idea. I know it's right around the house. It's a safe area. And, but I think you should, you know, be cognizant of the fact that there are coyotes in the area. So is there any way that as a group, because our, I, I think our main goal is to protect the community and to share the information that we're getting together. Is there any way that we can post daily or some way to let people know, hey, there's been coyotes in this area, please be aware type of a deal. I think it would be beneficial to the, to the community if we you were able to compile this information somehow and let them know, rather than you know it being on next door or something like that. Somewhere where that once we start letting people know that there is a community out there, that we're actually sharing the information that we're finding with the community. 
So Angela, where, where are you suggesting that the information be shared? So I, I don't know, as a group, I, I mean, I don't know if it's, if it's on the village website, you know, and maybe, um, I, you know, we had talked about doing this one page pamphlet. Are we gonna, is this gonna be like a, a something that we're gonna email to everybody or is it gonna be an actual mailed item to them? We, do we plan on mailing like a one page to all the homes in the community? I don't think, I don't know if the town is gonna, going to do that, spend the money on the mail to mail these so, one pagers out. Angelo, I think that what you may be talking about is kind of like more of like a real time map situation. Yeah, yeah, but be, right. Like a constant, right. So whoever is tracking and spotting right. them would have to report and then it would be like a real time on a map that right. Can, what I was getting at was if we're going to send out a communication to everybody, maybe at that same time, say hey look there's going to be a real time if anybody sees anything where they can post so people can look at it so we well, have some type of a link or a website or somewhere where they can go and actually post the information yeah i mean i think it's a little bit of a um it's a little hairy situation to have a young child walking uh, a puppy later you know at night but you know to your point i think it would be great because I have, you know, walking my, I have two Huskies, they're quite large, but I know that in the beginning, it's quite startling to turn around and have two eyes looking at you or following you or, you know, and of course I haze them, but it is a little bit, you do get taken aback. And so it would be kind of nice to have people like, hey, just letting you know, if you see a, if you see a coyote, we, they've been spotted in your area, don't be alarmed, this is what's going on. Right. Angela, I'm curious, what was their response when you just they did, they said had no FYI? Idea. They had no idea that there were coyotes in the area, which was shocking to me because I think, you know, being in the area and they have, they've been living there for quite some time that they would have at least, you know, heard from other neighbors that there were coyotes in the area, but they didn't know. So they were thankful that I, I approached them and told them about it, but, and they haven't, I haven't seen the child walking the dog anymore outside at least at nighttime. In the daytime, they're still in the yard with the dog. But at nighttime, I haven't seen the, the child walking the dog anymore. You know, it's interesting. I think with this and with almost everything else, I find that people are either completely in the dark and they, they know nothing, um, or they wanna know, but don't know how to find out the information. Um, and it's really, I always find if you really want to know what's going on, you have to be an investigator. You have to really dig. You have to go on those websites yourself. You have to go on social media. You have to go on the school website and read newsletter letters. You have to go on the village website and you have to just poke around and, and look at their bulletins and sign up to be on their email. Um, it's so hard to get information out. I find that's always the biggest struggle. Um, right. and that people just don't know where to go and they don't know where to look because you've got all these different outlets, right? You have social, the social media outlets, you have mailings, you have the, the websites of, um, the districts and, and the governments and things like that. And it's just trying to get that information out there and you, you never ever are going to reach everybody it just doesn't happen. Right. Um, to, to both of your points, uh, I think Carrie's absolutely right. You have to go on a lot of sites if you want to be informed. But uh, from all my experience, I found that you have to keep telling people and telling people and telling people again. Uh, so many meetings that we were, well, we said this at the last meeting, but some people weren't at the last meeting. Right. Or some people didn't read that email. So um, in many ways, we have to be repetitive. But I think Angelo made a, um, a really good point. If people, um, if we inform people that it's in their area and we could send a suggestion about this is what you do, I think that's being very proactive. Mm -hmm. Other people will soon develop a reputation of saying, oh, everything's gonna be fine, don't worry. And you want people to understand concerned and we were in the best interest of the entire community. I'm sorry, my internet cable keeps going in and out for some reason. So I've, I've missed portions of the meeting already. If I can add something, Carrie, uh, <clears throat> it's interesting because the manager's office is supposed to collect all the information Know, as to where they're sightings. Right. And so officially there, ver there was one alleged sighting that was not, um, you know, that nobody else on follow-up could find anything. So 
it would be helpful. And then, you know, everybody here has seen, you know, had sightings. Mm -hmm. uh, so if everybody would report, you know, if we could get people to report to the office, uh, they will post it on the, we can, you know, uh, <clears throat> have Robert work on the website, on the, you know, a page for the, you know, coyotes that would show where websites are, even, even with a map or, you know, whatever, um, or type of thing. So the people, if they're interested in finding out, they can, you can tell them, go to the website, you put it on social media, go to the website. Um, and I think that's a good way of starting to let people know what's going on. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. It could be on our, our Coyote Ad Hoc Committee page and they could just have, you know, whenever the village gets a reported sighting, if they could just have a section, um, recent coyote sightings or something like that with a map, I think that's a fantastic idea, but it's definitely going to be up to, I think, us who are maybe more in the know to get that word out there, whether we post it on Facebook or on Nextdoor um, or just word of mouth, like if you're talking to your neighbor, like, hey, you know, if you ever want to know where the coyotes are, go on the village website um, and there's a, there's a spot where you can see where the last coyote sighting was. I think that's a, a great thing to do, Angelo. I think it's it's just, just the logistics of how to get the information out there. You're muted, Hi. Angelo. Oh, can anyone hear Angelo? I still can't hear him. <laughs> what happened? You can type in the chat box. <laughs> Oh, a little bit. I can hear you, but you're super soft. I was just saying that um, that's good. They tend to stay in one area for a period of time. Like for, for a long time, they were all hanging out like between Carroll Avenue and Lorena. And then now they disappeared. And now you have sightings in other areas. So if you can at least alert the community to where they are, though the people in that community can be a little bit more aware of the coyotes, that's all. Well, I love the idea of a, of a map, uh, something that, that people see, and certainly when you have multiple sightings that might be in a certain area and you see clustered, you know, however, you know, we, you could code them. I mean, I'm sure we, we won't have any attacks, but you know, attack could be one color or a, uh, a sighting on a road by a car could be another color, but when people see clusters in certain areas, um, then they may be more uh, protective of their neighborhood. Well, if this is something you'd like to to <clears throat> like to pursue, I can, you know, if you want, I will talk with the village manager and Robert to, you know, come up with some ideas of how to implement something like. Uh, I think that'd be great. It could just be just another way to be proactive and and help <clears throat> inform people. Okay, it's a great idea. But people, everybody on the committee, when, you, when you've seen, you know, when you're deciding, just call the manager's office, 777-7703, and just let them know, you know, not, not that the, you know, just simply said, there's been a sighting, it was not, you know, there was no problems, et cetera. But that way we can then sort of document, you know, where, you know, where things are happening. Yes, I think people will post it on social media before they'll call the village office. I understand that, but people on the yeah. committee can, she could, should be able to do both. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So I think if, if one of us sees it, we can just give the office a call and be like, hey, I don't know if anybody reported this, but somebody posted it on Nextdoor or on Facebook that they spotted a coyote in Florence Park or in the Heights or or on, you know, Barry or Melbourne or wherever. I do think we should all do that. I agree. What is interesting is I've had reports of um, around Florence Park uh, and Barry Avenue uh, between Halstead and the Post Road of uh, uh, lots of deer, uh, which, oh, is, wow. which is interesting uh, because the deer do not seem to frequent areas where the coyotes are. That is interesting. Two deer on Brook, where I live. Yeah, they've all of a sudden recently, a whole family has been on beach in Melbourne. There's like four or five of them together. Yeah. So it. 
No, just to be proactive, it's nice to have the interactive map because it's not only children walking dogs later at night or puppies, it's people who have outdoor cats or let their dogs right. out late at night in the backyards unsupervised. It'll give you a heads up, you know, maybe to keep your cats in if it's a heavily populated area at that time. So I also would encourage you all to work on the one page that is um, not heavily worded. <laughs> Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and easily understood uh, that attracts that attracts interest as opposed to discourages interest. Yeah, hey, look, you know what? When I go to when I go buy a car, like a Hallmark card, if I open it up and it's like a book, I shut it and I put it back. I don't even read it. I don't, you know, nobody nobody wants to read all of that. They want to just do's, don'ts, simple. It'd be you know, more like, of like an infographic as opposed yeah. to like paragraphs. Like I'm picturing it more as like an infographic, which. Yes. Yes. You know, like when you get all those like dog things, like when people are, you know, what to feed your dog, not what to feed your right. dog or do's and don'ts, like something just simple like that, where they're more kind of bullets as opposed to lengthy paragraphs. I agree. No, I'm not going to commit the village to it, but the village does have two or three mailings a year that go out. There is no, you know, like the tax bills are go out once a year, twice. Um, the uh, recycling program goes out once a year. There's no reason that we can't, if it's one page, doesn't matter on two sides, but if it's one page, you know, eight and a half by 11, we probably can stick that into one of the mailings. That's a great idea. I think that would, that would reach a lot of people because, you know, I think that's everybody gets a tax bill, <laughs> including all the people like me who don't use social media at all. It would be, I think, important. So we, yeah. We're out here. We need so to know the, about this stuff. The only issue with the tax bills are for all of the buildings we have in the Maronix. So, for example, I'm in a co-op. Regency's a co-op. Uh, rental, you know, where there's multiple people living, not an individual. So one entity pays the tax bill, but a hundred people right. live there, they're not going to get it. But with the recycling, I think it goes individually or it gets stacked. Like we'll have 50 of them stacked in our lobby. So that right. one be something like that, just because that's a better tax, one. Yeah. Because when you do taxes, it goes to whoever pays the taxes, not everyone who lives here. That's true. And so, and people, even some people who do have a mortgage and, and have taxes to pay, their banks sometimes pay them. So I don't know, do they even still get the tax bill? I don't know because I, I pay my taxes. They're not um, escrowed. Yeah, and there's, so I'm not know, sure. there's more and more buildings coming up. Like we have all these rentals popping up. We have them on Post Road and over by uh, Halftime. And so none of those people are going to get it if there's a tax bill. Yeah, but no, I agree. I think the recycling mailing is probably a better one to put that in for sure. And that would be coming up soon, right? Because you usually do it on a calendar year. So uh, the, 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 the recycling one will be coming up shortly. Yeah, so. I, know, I know they're working on it. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know about when that is done. Um, but, um, you know, well, I think we just have to work as hard as we can and get something. And as soon as something is done, then we can see where we, where we can put it. So maybe not waiting until the next meeting to go over it. We might need to do like some emails back and forth because the the recycling and sanitation is an annual that should probably be going out either late December or early January. If we wait till we meet again and we miss it, there's not really another mailing that's gonna go to every single person coming soon thereafter. So maybe we wanna make that a, like in the next two weeks, let's kind of get the one pager done because and that maybe not that I'll, whole I'll, I'll find out and I'll let Carrie know so in, in the committee know. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else anybody um, would like to discuss or have any questions? Because um, I think we've touched on all points of the agenda that we were hoping to cover. I just went on social media for Facebook and next Your coyote? And the last coyote <laughs> sighting was around October 26th. Just to, right. So you don't, so if you go find one now, I'm going to be surprised. We want to know where you look. I'm telling you, it's like, it like without fail, it always happens. I go on Facebook, like we end the meeting and all of a sudden it's like, just saw a coyote. And I'm like, oh my God. So for three, for three weeks, it's relatively quiet. There's a recent post on Nextdoor. But the, um, the one pager, is there any 
Has anything been started on that or are we starting from scratch on that? Well, Simon, I think you were working on it. And if you yeah. need help, like share it and you know, people can help work on it. Sure, I, I had started something. I, I pulled it up while we were talking just now. Um, it is probably more lengthy than you want. I, I'm trying to cut some out, but you know, what I'll do is I'll do my best shot by tomorrow. I'll send it to you, Car, and then you can do what you want with it. Forward it onto the group. Okay. Um, edit it, whatever you feel is is makes sense. It can be front and back, but I think we definitely want to keep it. Just we don't want it to be more than one page. Actually, I just found a website that has a one pager for Hillsborough County. I can email whoever emailed me this information, the website. Um, it's from last year and it's literally do's and don'ts of urban coyotes. And it's from Florida, I guess, but it's got do's and don'ts and it has some basics. So that might be like a nice place to start because it's already done. I think I had that when I started this. I, I Googled a bunch of similar documents. Okay. Okay, so um, Simon, not I don't wanna put like, you know, pressure on you to do it within 24 hours and send it out. So, you know, yeah. maybe within the week, if you can. By the weekend. That would be great. By the weekend, for sure. Okay, all right. Um, anybody else? Okay, um, then I'm going to make a motion to close the meeting tonight until the next time. Oh, let's get the a date for the next one, um, which would be Thursday, December 10th. That's the second Thursday of the month. So if everyone can make a note of that date. Is any, are there any conflicts with anyone off the bat that anyone knows of? Yeah, I have a board meeting I have to be at that night. So I would not be able to attend until after eight o'clock. It would probably be over by then. Okay. Um, anyone else? Is there any way to send the um, Zoom out a little earlier than a few hours before, like the information? Only because, like, I I just had forgotten about the meeting, and um, if it's in my calendar a little bit earlier, that would be helpful. I know you don't do that, but I think um, Sally Sally usually sends us that email. Um, what when are you thinking? I don't know, like twenty four hours before to have the meeting on your calendar might be helpful. Oh yeah. Uh, Dan, can we can we ask Sally to send the link out the day before, or yes. if you want, I can it, it, I can do a normally, reminder as well. They normally go out a day the day before. Uh, Sally had uh, personal issues and was working from home today uh, and yesterday, and therefore it did not go out until I called. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So as long, if it's if it's it, it, you know it, it, 24 hours before, I think that's okay, right? Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. But okay. The, okay. Sounds good. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mm -hmm. Eric, Christine, Simon, Sharon, anyone else? <laughs> okay. Meetings adjourned. Everybody have a fabulous weekend. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yes, we won't, we'll see each other after Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye. Enjoy.